Jody. I'm the CEO of Armory, and I'd like to welcome you to Armory, tell you a little bit about why we created the company and what the problem is that we're solving. Really, it's what energizes me to get out of bed every morning to come to work. So we'll start here in the kitchen with Jonathan, who's making lunch for us. So we have a, an in-house chef. Jonathan is amazing. He makes meals that are customized to all of our dietary preferences. Today, it looks like we've got some hokey in the house. Okay, in the that house. is my favorite thing that you make. It's we got some amazing. Oh, wow. we got some, uh, some carry off the Ooh, Look at that. Oh, my gosh. It looks amazing. Thank you, sir. You're, you're awesome. Uh, I'll give you a, a quick little tour before we jump into a conference room. Uh, over here is Ben, one of our co-founders. And uh, he is uh, just back from his parental leave, just had a child. This is Isaac, our CTO. And um, let's go into a conference room here. Let's take a look. Isaac is uh, the third founder. I've been doing startups with Isaac for about 12 years now. This is our fourth company together. And we're doing 10-year founder vesting. We're not here to flip Armory. We're here to build an enduring company. So um, we'd really love to have you consider joining us if you're seeing this video it means that uh, we are interested in having that conversation with you okay so what I have drawn up here I actually just did this for a customer as a fortune uh, 20 bank that is a customer of armories and they asked us we are actually buying armory not just for the, uh, the solution that you have today on the spinnaker but for your product roadmap and we want to be able to tell that story internally so actually Sean one of our solutions architects and I just got on a video a Zoom call and we showed this customer what it is that we're doing beyond just what's public today. And I'm going to share that with you as well right now. So um, what I like to say is that Armory has an opportunity to power the third industrial revolution. And I know that's quite a statement, but let me break it down for you and tell you why I say that. If you think about the first one as being the steam engine and the second one being the manufacturing assembly line, and if you believe like we do that software is really going to power the ability for humans to have a better quality of life, then the third industrial revolution is really the digital assembly line. It is the ability for an idea to become a feature in production generating revenue. And that has a name. It's the software development life cycle. You may be very familiar with it. You may not be depending on your background, but we really believe that this SDLC, which is the equivalent of the manufacturing assembly line for ideas, is what is going to define success or failure for companies over the next couple of decades. If they don't figure out how to go from idea to feature in production with safety and velocity, they're going to die. They're going to be out-innovated and out-competed by other companies that do know how to do that. And so what we're doing with Armory is we are helping companies do that more effectively by commercializing an open source project that is known as Spinnaker. So you may be familiar with Spinnaker. If you are not, I'll give you a little bit of detail on Spinnaker today. But let's start more broadly. Let's not start with the technology. Let's start with the business need, which is that a company needs to be able to start with an idea and get it out to production with safety and velocity, and there's a lot that has to happen in order for that to work. There are a lot of systems of record across the SDLC. So let's go through them. You have an idea, you break it up into stories. Typically a company uses something like Jira or ServiceNow to do that. You do some coding on it. Uh, I'll actually draw a sad face on this developer because right now that process typically is a little bit of a soul-sucking exercise for developers. They'll write some code, they'll put it into uh, um, GitHub or Bitbucket, some sort of code repository, and it'll just sit there on the shelf for a month or for a quarter. I don't think there's anything uh, worse. Maybe there's things that are worse, but like there's, 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 it's really bad for a developer who really just wants to be creating features and getting them out into the world and having users use them to write code and have it just sit on the shelf. And that's what happens at most companies. Most low-performing, large Fortune 500 companies ship code about seven times per year. So that's about once every other month that they'll have a release. And so there's a lot of lag time in this SDLC. It's like you have a clogged toilet. I mean, it's really a crude way of saying it. So you write some code, you put it into a repo, you do CI on it, that's typically through a process like Jenkins. Now, this in red here is the development or the dev part of the SDLC. There's no value yet being generated for the world. That feature that you've conceptualized and coded up has not gotten out to any users. So this is all cost and it is, it is work that's being done with the hope of generating value. The next thing that's done is it is delivered out into the world. So this is the delivery category. But what we joke is that 
oftentimes what's delivered is like clean up an aisle three. So there are a lot of systems record and vendors over here to help solve for the pain of actually delivering software to production. So for example, feature flagging a company like LaunchDarkly so you can decide what features to, to turn on for specific cohorts of users. Um, APMs, uh, systems like Datadog or SignalFX or others to be able to monitor that code that's going out to production and tell you when there's problems. Centralized logging, companies like Splunk, alerting, companies like PageView so you can be alerted and understand that you know you get paged at 2 in the morning when there's a problem with code in production. So this is the ops part of the SDLC. And um, so together, dev and ops, this is the entire software development lifecycle. Now in the middle, this delivery category has traditionally not had a one, one category winner here. And the reason is because traditionally the process of going from code to feature and production has meant going out to data centers. And every company's data center is different. And so what that has meant is every company has been recreating the wheel, creating these very brittle pipelines and paths to production, typically using Chef or Puppet or Ansible, these mutable configuration management tools, and they've created dev and stage, and QA and prod um, environments, and it's brittle, it's all intertwined together. The, the, company, the teams that made these paths to production oftentimes have left the company. Nobody knows how they work. A lot of the institutional knowledge of how to deploy is, is in people's heads. Oh, we want to deploy that, but Ed knows how to deploy it, and he's on vacation for two weeks, so we'll just wait for two weeks. So this is what causes a lot of the pain is that there's a lot of just intertwined mess here. And so what Netflix realized when it moved out of data centers and into AWS a decade ago was that there was a better way. And they created this platform called Spinnaker, which is a project that they've now open sourced and is in the CD foundation. It's a new foundation that's a sister foundation to the CNCF, part of the Linux foundation. And so Spinnaker is an abstraction layer that allows a company to create a standard path to production across teams. So for example, let's say that you have a thousand or ten thousand or more application developers at a company, they should all be deploying out to production in one standardized way. And with Spinnaker, you can do that and you can have flexibility in the actual deployment pipelines for each microservice. As a company breaks monoliths up into microservices, they want to be able to have you know dev, stage, and prod, and maybe there's a, a manual judgment, which is a manager approval because they're not yet fully confident in that code going out to production continuously. They, they, they want to put a, a manual check in there. You can do that with Spinnaker, and you can also just take it out very easily when you don't need it anymore. So you, you are getting rid of this brittle kind of, a, we, we call it spit polish and tape, these scripted paths to production that are all intertwined. And you are now allowing for one golden path to production. Also, one single pane of glass, so you can visualize all of the standardized cloud targets here in one place. And so the beauty of Spinnaker is that it is an open source project where the cloud vendors themselves are the ones that are building the paths or the mapping layers into this abstraction platform. Those are called cloud drivers. And so you have engineers from Pivotal and from Microsoft and from AWS and from Google and from Oracle and also Netflix and others like Armory that are building these paths into production. Now what we also believe to be true is that anytime you have an abstraction layer with a lot of variants and what's effectively the hardware, you need that abstraction layer to be open source. So look at Linux, for example. Uh, also look at Android, right? The way that Apple was able to vertically integrate and not have uh, a lot of uh, mess here was because they constrained the underlying hardware. And so if you believe that it's gonna be an AWS only world, Spinnaker is not as valuable. It is still valuable because you can still use it to have one golden path to production with standard security, with standard compliance policies, for example. Um, but it is very, very, very valuable when you want to start to use different targets for different workloads, especially as you break monoliths up into microservices. And oh, by the way, most Global 2000 companies are also starting to run Kubernetes in their data centers, which makes it just another cloud target. So even if you're only using AWS, but you're also still in data centers, Spinnaker is a very, very, very good way to execute on a hybrid cloud strategy, which is what some of the companies do when they are just beginning this journey and they don't want to fully leave data centers. So what we've done with Armory, what's public, is that we are Spinnaker at enterprise scale. We have created a distribution of this open source project that is really built for Global 2000 companies. It installs well in AirGaps data, data center environments. We've built 
proprietary features that are valuable for global 2000 companies like pipelines as code. So you can check in these pipeline definitions into Git and then be able to standardize them across application teams so that it's not herding cats where every team is deploying in a different way. You can have some standardization that leads to the ability to have some, um, some global security policies, compliance policies, et cetera. That is the beginning of Armory's story, is that we are enabling a company to create a standard platform here, to leverage a standard platform here uh, for delivery and move that delivery to instead be continuous delivery, right? So over time, it becomes CD, continuous delivery. But at the beginning, it's honestly just about delivery, about being able to deploy that that, that, that artifact to production with safety and security across targets. That is the first step. Once you strap your seatbelt on, you can start to drive the Ferrari faster. Okay, now there's actually more to Armory. So, you know, I, I said, we're doing 10-year founder vesting, we're not gonna flip this company. So the longer term strategic objective for Armory is to actually take this open source project and build a platform around it that automates and compresses the entire SDLC. If you talk to a CIO, and you ask them, which we do, tell me about your SDLC, they often can't answer that question. There, is, there are too many fiefdoms within their company that own each of these systems of record. There's too many vendors across this entire SDLC to be able to easily understand and visualize where are my bottlenecks? What are the things that are keeping me from being able to deliver software with safety and velocity across all of my teams and all of my applications? So the opportunity that we have as Armory and what we're executing against is to pursue an integration strategy to unlock the data that lives in each of these systems of record and have it start to work together to automate the experience and create this automagical platform for software developers. And so I'll just give you one, one example of that. So we have, uh, we've created some of these, some of these the community has made to allow Spinnaker to leverage uh, the data exhaust coming off of APMs to automate canary deployments. When you think about it, it makes no sense that an engineer is looking at dashboards deciding whether to promote or kill a canary. It should be computers doing that. And so with Spinnaker and Kayenta, you're able to use Datadog and other, other sources to automate canary deployments. Well, now we have the data exhaust coming off of these APMs. What can we do with that? One thing that we can do with that is we can auto-calculate an SLA for every single microservice. And so this is a pretty big deal. Application teams typically do not create SLIs, SLOs, SLAs for their services because there's so many of them and it's a very heavy lift to do so. You get that for free out of the box when you're using Armory and Spinnaker. And so now you can do things, really interesting things with this SLA. You can say things like, you know, why don't we institute an SLA budget so that if we go over that budget, we just automatically start to roll back. And so what we're building at Armory is the ability to do that. So today we can tell the developer, hey, your, uh, your deployment broke your SLA. But what we're building is the ability to just auto roll it back because we're the ones that are actually deploying that out to production. We can be the ones that also just roll it back for them. And then we can tell the human, hey, we noticed that that deployment broke your SLA. We rolled it back for you. Click a button if we shouldn't have done that, right? So there's automation that we can bring to this. Um, another thing that we can do is we can also tie into the code repo, so let's say into GitHub, to be able to understand which commit from which developer was it that actually caused this SLA to, to be broken. And then we can let that developer know. Then we can start to, to provide metrics to leadership of the company to say, here are the, the teams or the applications or the issues that you're seeing that are causing your bottlenecks or causing your failed deployments. And so we can start to bring visibility and transparency into where the SDLC is breaking down. Uh, so those are a couple ideas. There are a ton more, a ton more things that, that, we're, that we are building uh, or conceptualizing. And if this sort of thing excites you, if you really believe like we do, that we are just now entering the steep part of the curve. So when I draw this here, uh, you know, if you look back so over time, um, there was the Neolithic age where agriculture and property rights started to make human life better. There was the first industrial revolution with the steam engine. There was the second one with the manufacturing assembly line. So now people could travel and get access to cheap goods. Um, you know, now we are here, and I believe that we are really just not entering the steep part of the curve. I really believe that Armory has the opportunity to influence the steepness of that curve. This is leverage on leverage. Software is the highest leverage way to improve humanity, and we are helping companies ship better software faster. 
And that's just an incredibly fulfilling thing to know that we are helping other companies innovate faster. So if you're jazzed by that like we are, uh, we'd love to talk to you. All right, hope that was a, a good overview of Armory. Thanks.